In this video, we'll be cleaning up the code that we made in the previous video with Boat Visual Scripting while working on a game that does not look like a space shooter, right? But actually is. Now, we are going to do that by using SuperUnit. SuperUnit are our own custom node that we make in which we'll put a certain function, like making the player move or making the player shoot bullet. We'll do both of them, by the way. And the reason why we are using SuperUnit is that, yes, it makes the code look much more cleaner, but it is also reusable, meaning you can just copy the SuperUnit into another script and it works perfectly. But for that to happen, you have to make that SuperUnit a little bit properly so that it works on both script. Now, with that said, we'll also make a asteroid and we'll use a SuperUnit that we make for our bullet and we'll use that to make our asteroid. So you'll have an example of me just copying a super unit and putting it in another script. Now, with that said, we can get started. So hey, this is Crone AB and this channel is here to make you just a little bit more better in game development. If you like the content here, then please smash the like button. And if this video gets 150 likes, I'll bring the next video out by Sunday. And if you want to support the channel, then you can do that by hitting the subscribe button. And with that said, let's get on with the video. So now let's start by making a super unit for our player movement. So first of all, let me make it big by double clicking on it. So here, right click, add unit, and let's write super to add a super unit. Click on it. Now let's go inside by basically double clicking on it. And you'll see two things called input and output node. In the input node, you put input values and in the output node, you put output values. First of all, Let's go into here. This is the control input. Click on plus and let's say start. Do the same here. Control output and let's say end. What are this you might say? Let's go back to player. You can go it from here and you will see a flow like this, like these. So now you can just connect your update here and then connect this here, which is awesome. Now, let me just drag these two values out. Okay, these are the input values. So I'm just going to drag them out and I'm going to copy all of them, basically cut all of them, control X. And inside here, I'm going to put those values. Great. Now, first of all, I'm going to make a flow here, which goes there and goes here. And now it says something is missing, which is our speed value, right? So in our input, click here and below the control input, if I just slide it a bit down here, you will see input values. Click on plus and here it will be named speed, S-P-E-E-D. Okay, now you can see that speed and it's going to be a type of float. So now this is the speed value in our super unit. So I'm going to click here and then drag and connect it here and then click again and connect it here. And now your super unit is done. So let me just organize it a little bit. If I now go back here and I don't need this anymore, I can just bring this down and I don't need both of them. I just need one of them because both of them are the speed value. I'm going to delete one of them and then put this connected here. Now, if you think about it, this is all we need to make the player move the super unit and the speed value. And look, it looks so much more weight. <laughs> Let me just pull it here. So much more cleaner, right? Now let's see if it works or not. So I'm going to remove full screen. You can click here or double click here. I'm just going to double click here and let's hit play. And now you can see everything is working. If I just click inside here, you can see everything just flows from here. The input is taken from here, the 25 right? That's the speed of our player. The input is taken from here and the output is given from here. And because of that, we can also go to the other part, right? Shoot the bullet. So everything works. Now let's do the same for our this as well, this function as well. So I'm just gonna basically, uh, first of all, drag this a little bit out and drag these three values. These are the input values. I'm just gonna drag it a little bit out and this will be in our super unit. So I'm going to remove this first of all, right click here again, super. And by the way, I forgot to tell you here, you can name this super unit as well from here. Basically, let me just double click on it. Click here 
as you can see, I can give a title. So let's go here and give it a title. Let's say player movement X comma Y, something like that. So player movement X comma Y. This will be our spawn object. Now in here, first of all, let's make our control unit called start. And here we need two control unit, right? One, I will call it continue. And the other one, I will call it end. I'm going to tell you why in a little bit, but for now, just follow along. Okay. Now I'm just going to go here and just copy all of this control X and then paste it here. So now it takes three values. One is a Boolean to see if we can shoot bullet or not. Another is what we want to spawn, right? The object we need to spawn and the spawn position for our spawn position. So here let's add those three values. So I'm just going to click on plus maybe three times, bring the three values. First one is going to be a type of Boolean and let's call it can spawn. The second one is a type of game object and let's call it object to spawn. So OBJ to spawn, object to spawn. And the third one is the spawn position. So I'm just going to call it spawn position and it's also a type of game object. Okay. So now we have those three values. Let's just go here. First of all, connect it and so if we can spawn is true, only then we will spawn. And what we will spawn is we will spawn a object that we need to spawn and we'll spawn it in the spawn position with the spawn positions rotation. Or if you don't want to do any rotation, right? You don't want any type of rotation. Then you can just remove this. Let's just remove this. And from here, do this and write Quaternion, Q-U-T-E, Q-U-T-A. <laughs> Q U A T E R N I O N, Quaternion, right? And there is something called Quaternion dot identity. So this means no rotation. The rotation will be 0, 0, 0. Now, the two output values, the reason why two output values is that, so let's say I just spawn a bullet. Once I spawn a bullet, maybe I want to do something else, then go to the next, next thing we might have here, right? So I'm going to continue. If I'm going to do that, then I'm going to continue and I'm going to continue after I shoot the bullet. I'm going to continue and do something else more after I shoot the bullet. But maybe you want to do something without shooting the bullet. That can also happen. That's why we will just end it. If you do not shoot the bullet, then we will just end it and do the next thing that is in our flow. So basically one last time, this means that we will do something even if we shoot a bullet or not, right? This means that we will do something only after we shoot a bullet. So that's why continue to only do things after we shoot a bullet and to end if we want to do something if even if we do not shoot a bullet or we do shoot a bullet, no problem, we will do something then end. So that is how it works. I hope you understood that. My bad if you didn't, but you can ask me in the comment section down below. Now, this is also done. And by the way, we're going to use this same thing to make our asteroid spawner as well. So that's why I set it up like this. Now I just need to basically, first of all, copy the flow. And then here I need to put this. So every time I press the button, we will spawn something. The something that will spawn is going to be our object bullet. And the place we are going to spawn is going to be our spawn point. And hey, it is done. So now, as you can see, it looks really, really organized, right? So after that, let's see if it works or not. So my movement is okay and I can shoot a bullet as well. So great. Now after doing this, let's make a super unit for our bullet as well. So project, let's go to our bullet. It's in my prefab and in the flow graph. Now let's make a super unit for our bullet. So I'm just going to right click here. Super. And this super unit will be called move object. So move object. Now our asteroid that we are going to make is basically our bullet, but it goes downwards instead of going upwards in the Y axis, right? With some amount of speed, which is kind of slower than our bullet. And it destroys itself after like five seconds. So it's everything is almost the same. Just we have one extra thing that is we go downwards instead of upwards. So first of all, let's set that up and then we will make it into a super unit so that we can just copy that super unit and use it in our asteroid. So for that, what we need to do is first of all, let me just remove this for now. And we need to add one more value that is called in my variable. I'm just going to add it here. 
So it's called move direction. The move direction will also be a float and for our bullet it's going to be a positive one. Now I'm just going to drag and drop it here and I'm going to do this. And now we move at a certain direction with certain amount of speed. So now we have to multiply this value with our time dot delta time. So let me just do that. Here let me just make a duplicate of this and just do this and do this and then do this. So everything is same just we added one more value that helps us go up or down according to our wish. So let's see if it works or not. So if I hit play right now this is one right so it should go up but if I make it minus one then let's first of all go up and now you can see it goes down according to our move direction which is awesome. So let's make a super unit so these three values will be out here and in the super unit again we will have our start and the end and in the start we need three values all of them will be a float so three values let's just okay let's just do this and bring it out okay three values all of them will be a float So the first one will be called speed, S-P-E-E-D. Second one is called move direction. And the third one is called destroy time. Now, after that, let me just go in here and then just copy all of this inside here. And now I just need to connect the speed here and the movement direction here. And my flow, I need to connect it here and the destroy time I need to connect it here. So let me just bring it down here and like this. So now everything is done and if you want to you can connect this here. Now save it let's go back here and now I can just do this connect all of this here. This guy will be the speed, this will be the move value and this will be the destroy time. And hey our super unit for our bullet is also done. So now let's see if it still works or not. Right now uh, the movement direction is down so it will go down. Okay let me make it one. Now it will go up and yeah everything works. So now after we have organized both of those things now let's make our asteroid. So to make asteroid first of all we need something. Uh, for now this will be good. So I'm just going to drag it here right and change its color to maybe a purple to a dark purple it looks great so now I want this to basically rotate keep on spinning and then fall down so first of all let's have the spinning part click here and let's add a flow FLO and make a new macro I'm gonna put it inside my project inside my macros and it's gonna be called rotate object going to be called rotate object I'm going to go to the editor graph make it big and here all I need to do is just click here right rotate and select this one and here I'm just going to write minus one which if I just hit play will give me something like this yeah that is fine now if I want to move the player, I can do it from here, move the asteroid. I can do it from here, but something like this will happen. So let's say I move it like this mm, by writing translate, T-R-A-N-S-L-A-T. Right, and I give it a 0 0.1. What happened is it keeps on rotating because of this. It keeps on rotating. So we don't want this to happen. So let's just only put the rotation part here. Now how we can make it move as well as rotate is that we just need another game object. So let's just call this a asteroid sprite. Asteroid body maybe B O D Y. Right? And we'll have another object. Empty object and we'll call it asteroid. Asteroid. Let me just reset its position. So 0 comma 0 and I'm just going to drag this asteroid in here like this and now put another flow in here. When I put the flow, new macro, inside my macros folder, I'm just going to write asteroid. This is going to be the asteroid function. 
Let's remove the asteroid. Now I'm just going to remove this from our flow and go to my project, go to my prefab, go to the bullet and just copy, click on it and control C and now go to my asteroid, click on it and control V. So this is everything that makes the player move at a certain direction and destroys it after a some amount of time. Now our asteroid is almost set up. We don't need to do anything, just we need a speed value, movement direction and destroy time. So in the variable section, uh, let me just do it here. In the variable section, I need three values, right? One is called speed, speed, which is a float, move direction, which is also a float and our destroy time, which is also a float. So our speed, let's say for this, our speed will be 10 because we want to go at a slow speed. The move direction will be minus one because we want to go down and the destroy time, let's say we will destroy it after every five seconds. Let me just drag these values out and just drag those values like this. And at the top, I just need the update and I need to connect the update. So now if you think about it, it will just start moving downwards instantly. As you can see, it started moving downward just as we need it and destroyed itself after five seconds, which is awesome. So that is the end of this video. Thank you for watching till the end and I hope you like the video. So the next video will be working on the collision system, meaning if the player touches the asteroid, the player dies. If the bullet touches the asteroid, the asteroid dies. And if the coin collides with the player, then the coin dies and gives us some amount of coins. A system like that. And we will also make a spawning system, which will spawn our asteroid and coin randomly in a random position just above our screen. So smash the like button, hit subscribe. And again, if this video reaches 150 likes, the next video will be out by Sunday. So again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.